Hello everybody, the Novigrad expansion has just dropped and I had some apprehensions about the new faction but uh, I was playing it today and it's very fun. There's a lot of thinking that you have to do uh, in terms of using your coins, your money, uh, the things that can spend coins, using them properly, sequencing very properly, thinking about carryover into future rounds and just generally a lot of good stuff um, and a lot of thinking going into the games and the gameplay with this faction. It's definitely refreshing to have new cards and new stuff to do in the game as always, and new deck building options. Uh, and I don't have any gameplay for you today, because I wanted to rush out some decks, so that, you know, if you are in need of some help for the deck building, then you have that ready. I will of course be doing some gameplay videos in the coming days as well, uh, and improving upon these decks and showing them after that. Um, but today I've got five decks for you, one for each leader. You know, they're not perfect, they aren't gonna be, it's the first day of the patch, and I just cobbled these together pretty quickly, but I do think they're pretty pretty decent for what they are, especially at this point uh, in the patch, you know, when people are kind of experimenting still a little bit and the meta hasn't settled and people aren't playing the other factions. Um, but yeah, what I've got here I think is pretty competent. I'll be giving you uh, some tips and tricks with each deck, you know, the finishers, what you should be playing for, some synergies and whatnot, uh, as well as, you know, which I think are stronger and which are weaker decks comparatively. Uh, but let's jump right into it then. Uh, so the first one I have is a King of Beggars deck. I think this leader is very, very powerful. He actually got a buff compared to what he was doing on PTR. He now has an order effect, which gives you six coins effectively, and you can split it up and use that to win rounds earlier in the game instead of in round three if you need to, which is always nice to have on a leader. He also makes all your tributes cost one coin less. So the idea with this leader is you want to play a lot of tribute cards, and there are a fair amount of them. Uh, in the Syndicate faction, and there are a fair amount of very strong ones as well. And particularly the Bronze Court of this deck is very powerful. Uh, you have a lot of great tribute cards. The Renegade Mage, you can play the tribute one for free with King of Beggars, so this guy's a 6 for 4. This one is a 5 for 4, which can also heal an ally, which is very, very powerful with stuff like Freak Show, which can damage itself, as well as the Endrega, which can damage itself with Insanity. And even to a lesser extent, the Bouncers or damage coming in from the opponent. Um, but yeah, you've got some really strong tribu tribute cards in the bronzes, the fence can also be nice to pay off some of the gold uh, with that tribute ability. Uh, and you also uh, have a lot of just good cards that the faction has. There are a lot of very, very strong ones, and I'll talk about those. They're in pretty much all the decks, so I'm sorry about that. If you want some incredibly diverse, um, you know, card sets and whatnot, then you're not going to have them uh, from these decks, because I am running what I think are the very, very strong bronzes in all of the decks, and even the very, very strong golds. Let's talk about those quickly. Sewer Raiders and Casino Bouncers are very, very good thinning cards. You, of course, want to get some gold in your bank and then play the Raiders, pretty obvious. And with the Bouncers, you can use them as an 8-point tempo play, or you can proc them without spending money. Depends whether you've got money to spend, whether you want to do the thinning and, you know, early on, maybe spend some money and get some more points or whatever. The Andrega is really good as well, it's like a long ship that can actually activate immediately, it has zeal pretty much, um, and it can spend coins instead of damaging itself, so very good card for removing stuff and setting up uh, other effects. And Blacksmith is really good uh, for spending all your money effectively and boosting up all your allies. It also has great synergy with Nathaniel, and this guy's in the deck, in a fair amount of the decks as well, because he's a Fire Sworn guy and he's quite a good Fire Sworn card, there aren't too many that work. Uh, in these non-swarm decks that are fire swarms. So basically we have him in here. He synergizes very well with Blacksmith and also the Horst Borsodi who boosts your guys. You boost him up, you give bleeding, but really he's there to activate Siggy and he's kind of the, the linchpin of this deck and a couple of the others that I have here. Very powerful card, has Intimidate and able to generate a huge amount of money, effectively gives you nine coins in the bank, which is the max amount. He maxes out your money effectively as soon as you play him. And that can pull out the Flying Redanian, so uh, that is really strong. It's basically a Roach. If you then get to Roach for four points, and if you then get to nine coins again later in the game, it will come back. So that's a very, very powerful combo. If you can get that early on, you're looking very good. You want to generate some coins with Siggy. Uh, you want to play your Tribute guys for free, effectively. And you want to thin the deck out with all your thinning options and finish the game off with Philippa, who's a very, very powerful finisher when you have a lot of money in the bank and big units to take. Or just putting money... Uh, you know, through the Freak Show, through the Borsodi, Borsodi brothers, they're very good ways to spend your money and get a lot of points in the round three and the round two, whenever. 
also have Sausage Maker to spend some spare coins. You can even use your leader and translate that into carryover sometimes, uh, you know, on a dry pass or whatever. Very, very nice. Uh, and all around, I think this is just a very competent, good value deck, um, playing a lot of the very strong cards. And I was having a lot of success with it, so feel free to try it. Let's jump onto the next deck. Uh, the next deck is a bit of a bit of a worse one. It is a Cleaver Shoop deck. I don't know exactly how strong this one is, but I would guess it's probably the weakest one that I have here of the bunch. Um, and of course, it's a Shoop deck, so it's pretty uh, pretty obvious what's going on here. Just a lot of bronzes. I th I've picked what I think are the best bronzes for a kind of Shoop deck. You've got a lot of crime specials. You have, of course, uh, some guys that are going to pay off the profit, and you know a little bit of profit in stuff like Swindle, the Shakedown, the Payday, the Dip in the Pontar, the Eavesdrop. Specials that are generating you money, and then you're able to translate that into points on the board with the engines and whatnot. And this faction just has so many good bronzes, I don't think a Shoop deck is going to be bad. Uh, it might not be as strong as some of the other versions that you could play of um, Cleaver, or even, you know, the faction in general, but it's definitely going to be decent. And of course, Cleaver can pull the Shoop, which is pretty cool, um, I believe. Yeah, you'll easily be able to pull Shoop. You can also pull Nova Gradian Justice, which is a very good card. This will allow you to pull um, two of the Intimidate, where are they? Two of the Intimidate Dwarves, if you want to. Uh, and you can then go crazy with crimes. Alternatively, you can just take the uh, the good old Cleaver's Muscle uh, for a couple of shielded boys. So that's kind of your target, either the Shoop or the Nova Gradian Justice in this deck for that Cleaver. Uh, and otherwise, you still have this Siggy, uh, which is enabled with the Nathaniel and other stuff, of course. Uh, and some other tools in there to generate money, get the points, get the carryover, feel really good about life. So that's a pretty fun Shoop deck if you want to try Shoop Cleaver. Um, you can also play around with just general crime-focused cleaver, potentially that could be quite interesting and fun and good. But I think this is the weakest of the decks I'll show here. Let's jump into the next one. Uh, so now we have Gudrun. Uh, Gudrun, basically a value-based deck. Again, you're seeing a lot of the same cards because a lot of the cards are very, very strong and necessary for the decks. You know, the Borsodi brothers are needed to really get the money and pay it off. Uh, likewise, you've got a lot of these engines like the, the Andrega, the Blacksmith, etc., which is very good value. Five for fives, which allow you to spend money. Same with the thinning options, they're all there in most of these decks, if not all of them. But the difference here is, of course, you have Bintsy as a finisher, uh, which can generate a lot of points. This is very similar, to be honest, to the, uh, the uh, what's he called, King of Beggars deck. Not really too many different cards, just a bit of a different uh, take. Instead of going for those tribute bronzes, you've instead got the finisher value with Gudrun and Bintsy, and potentially Fences if you want, or with your other money making and spending guys. So I think Gudrun's pretty good. Um, it might even be one of the best uh, leaders. I'm not exactly sure where it falls. King of Beggars is close in power level to her, I would say. Um, not the perfect list, but you know, you'll definitely be able to win with this one. Okay, we also have a bounty deck, which I was having a lot of fun with. I don't know how strong... I'll oh, just refresh because the... The bug with the cards is happening as it usually does. Um, but this one, again, got some of the, you know, very good cards. This one doesn't have Siggy, Royven in, and as a result, you don't have to play some of the cards enable that. And that's just because you're getting a lot of money from the bounties anyway. You don't really need to fill your bank up with the Siggy, and it also makes the deck building a bit more challenging. But really, the focus here is on giving bounties to units with Witch Hunters and with Caleb. And you don't have too many of those, so you've got to be very careful with what you're doing. You need to make sure the Caleb is giving the bounty before he dies. You need to make sure your Witch Hunter is giving it to the right thing before you play Garadin or, uh, you know, other stuff. Um, you know, you want to basically use your leader on one of the bountied units to get a bunch of coins. And then, of course, that can enable the Rodanian, that can enable a big fin Philippa finisher. As well as the regular just spending of money, which Hunter Executioner is there as well as another tool to gain profit and shoot targets that have been bountied and help to kill them. Also Payday in there for some nice money making. I think this deck's pretty decent. I would say this is probably the second weakest after um, the, uh, the Cleaver deck, but it's still pretty competent and I think you can win with it. It might even be better than the Hemelfart deck, which I'm also going to show here, uh, which is all swarm-based. But yeah, again, just good value, more more surrounding the bounties rather than the, the straight, um, you know, coin generation of Siggy and whatnot. And last but not, not, not least, we have the swarm um, deck, which is Hemelfart. Now, this one is just very different to all the others, and I actually played this one the most out of all of them. Um, had a lot of fun experimenting and trying to refine this. 
Again, we have Siggy. He's just very, very good. He pulls out the Redanian. Um, I was experimenting with not playing him uh, and whatnot, but I think it's pretty good. And basically, you have a ton of spawning tokens. You have Sacred Flame to boost units that get spawned. Uh, you have things like Jermaine to spawn units. That, that in uh, Inquisitor is very, very strong and is kind of your finisher for the deck. You want to spam a row with a bunch of guys and get all the buffs on them. Uh, he also profits four, so be careful when using this guy. You want to be on five coins before you play him, uh, ideally, or low, uh, or below that. But you want to get to the nine to get the Redanian out. It's kind of a pretty tricky deck to play, I was finding, but uh, it was very fun when it worked. Uh, Damnation's pretty cool as well, allows you to get quite a lot of points, especially if you have Sacred Flame on the board. Uh, Procession of Penance is a big tempo play, allows you to play a ten for six once you've got the Zealots on the board. So really, the game plan with this deck is you want to generate coins early on in the game with things like the Siggy, with things like your Swindles, your uh, Pickpocket, you know, dip in the Ponta. And basically, early game, round one, you want to generate money, you want to thin your Bouncers, your Raiders, uh, and then you want to actually try to spend your money so that in future rounds you can congregate uh, for the full value uh, and then go crazy with Inquisitor and other things. So... This one's probably the hardest of the bunch to play, I would say, but it's very rewarding when it works. Gimpy was, of course, nerfed, so that makes this, you know, pretty decent, I would say. Probably not the best deck here, but you can definitely win with it, and it's a, it's a fun time and very hard to get your head around some of the sequencing and plays, to be honest, in terms of, oh, I have money, do I need money? Like, how much am I saving for round three? How much am I saving for round two? I need to make sure this lines up with that, and I spend this money on this. Really fun gameplay for me. I've, I've been finding it great. Hopefully you will as well, but yeah, I would recommend Swarm if you're looking for something different to the other kind of value-focused um, decks that I have here. But yeah, those are five decks. Hopefully one or more of them will be, you know, useful or enjoyable for you. Uh, I do know there'll be complaints probably of, oh, Freddy, there's too many cards that are the same. I'm just putting the good cards in the decks, guys, okay? Um, if you want weaker decks, well, maybe I'll get around to making some of those later on, some more meme -y. Uh, or, you know, lesser tier decks. But for now, just some good stuff to, to kick the patch off with. Uh, I think that should be pretty fun for you guys and for myself as well. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, do of course feel free to subscribe. I will be posting more videos um, in the coming days with some gameplay and whatnot, and hopefully some more refined versions of these decks and other ones, uh, maybe even for other factions as well with some of the new cards. So be sure to be ready for that stuff and subscribe. Of course, thanks again, guys, and I'll see you guys next time.